Lesson 7.4, Techniques for Solving Logarithmic Equations. So we've already come across a lot of things we know now about logs and exponents and their functions. Um, note at the top there, which is somewhat review, any positive number, any positive number can be represented as any positive number can be represented as and then uh, I'm going to split this page just down the middle two things number one any positive number can be represented as a power of any other positive base And second, a logarithm of any other positive base. Okay, we've already kind of experienced both of these things, but we can take any positive number and write it as the power of any other positive base. Uh, when we did that, we ended up with an exponent that had a log expression using logs. Uh, but we can also express it as a logarithm of any other positive base. And this fact, being able to switch back and forth or being able to express something differently really helps us being able to solve things. So I'm just gonna take an example if we think about the number 4, for example, we could write that as a power of any other positive base. Well, let's start with a couple easy ones. How could I represent the number 4 as a power? Uh, 2 to the 2. Okay, we could do 2 to the power of 2. Let's start with an even easier one. 4 to the power of 1. 2 to the power of 2. I think that's cheating. Because any number to the 1 is. Yep. Yeah. Still could be helpful. Anything else? What if I start with the base of 16? What's the exponent? Uh, 16 to the negative 4. Or negative 2. If you divide it by. You're getting your negatives mixed up. What does a negative do? It and divides. Uh, no, a base of a negative power flips it. So you don't want to, it doesn't divide by four. It uh, gets like, would be like the fourth root, uh, but it would be I reciprocal. I, I thought every step down is a division. Oh, no, yeah. I need the square root of 16, 16. One half. which is to the power of one half. Okay. I'm not going to prove this one to you right now, but you can also take. 10 to the power of log 4, and you'll get 4. All right, well, we can also express the number 4 as a logarithm with the different bases. One easy one is to say, okay, that means four is gonna be, if, it, if we're talking about logarithms, then four is gonna be the exponent that takes a certain base to equal a certain number. So if we made our base two, then we're basically saying two to the power of four is 16. So the log of 16 base two is four. It's a way to write four as a log. We could do the same thing with a different base. Instead of taking a base of two, we could take a base of three. And what log do we have to have base three to be equivalent to four? Well, it's three to the power of four would be 81. So the log of 81 base three is also four. What about a common log? A log with a base of 10. What do I have to write here? The log of 10 to the 1,000. 
10,000? Yeah, so it'd be 10,000. Because 10 to the power of 4 is 10,000. That's four zeros. Four zeros. Okay? So you can take any positive number and rewrite it as a power of any other positive number or as a logarithm of any other positive number. And this can be helpful if you need to uh, restate things or say things in a different way so that you can solve different problems. In example one, we are going to find the roots of each equation. Equation A, two examples, there's going to be an A and a B. And here we go. We are given the log of open bracket x plus 4 equals 1. There is a strategy here where we can actually just use what we learned in the first couple lessons and we can just take this and rewrite in exponent form. We can just equal um, the log 2 equals log 10 and then x plus 4 equals 10. Yep, so that's what we are going to do in example 2. Okay. An example in this one, you you can see that you can literally just rewrite it. You don't have to take anything. You can rewrite it in exponent form. You have a base of 10. So this basically says 10 to the power of 1 is x plus 4. So x plus 4 is equal to 10 to the power of 1. That's rewriting this in exponent form. And from there we can solve. Subtract 4 from both sides. x equals 6. Lying that, like, the examples are like, small. Yep. I wasn't lying. I wouldn't do that. Okay, B. Slightly more challenging. This log has a base of 5, and in brackets we have 2x minus 3. And on the right-hand side we have equals 2. In this strategy, we are going to express the number 2 as a log with a base of 5. Okay? So we're going to express express 2 as a log with a base of 5. Could we put 2 log 5 to the 5? It would be 2 log 5 to the base of, with a base of 5. Well, let's rewrite our left side we get the same, okay. 2x minus 3. And then on our right side, basically if we take the log with a base of 5, the value that we're missing is 5 to the power of 2, which is 25. So the log of 25 base 5 is 2, because 5 to the power of 2 is 25. Now that we have two of the same logs, we can simply equate these two expressions, 2x minus 3 equals 25, and we can solve from there. Add 3 to both sides, divide by 2, x equals 14. Okay, so the first trick that you're learning is uh, you can just rewrite things, even if they look a little bit confusing, you just rewrite it as an exponent, or if it were given as an exponent, you could rewrite it as a log, depending on what's more helpful. Here, you're just expressing, taking this number 2 and expressing it as a log. And the key is that you create a log with the same base so that you can equate the two expressions. So we go to example and two. We're going to solve some simple logarithmic equations. Uh, there are two of them for us to solve. An equation basically means there's an equal sign. And we're going to solve them. That means finding the roots of each equation. So in A we are given the log of bracket x minus 1, close bracket, minus 1, is equal to negative the log of open bracket x plus 2, close bracket. Double check that yours looks the same as mine. And what we're going to do from here, 
first step to solving this is we are going to isolate the logs on one side. So isolate logs on one side. In order to do that, on the right here, I have negative the log of x plus 2. So I'm going to add that to both sides. I'm also going to add 1 to both sides to eliminate this 1 on the left. So what we end up with is the log of x minus 1 plus the log of x plus 2 equals positive 1. Now from here, we have two separate log expressions, expressions using log, and the x is trapped in each one of them. Can't get it out. But we have some laws that we can use. So we're going to apply the product law of logs, which basically says that if we have two logs with the same base, that are added together, that's equivalent to the log of their products. Okay, so our left side now has a single log, and inside that that it's a it's kind of a messy. Uh, we're going to end up expanding this thing. It's going, to, it's going to turn into a quadratic. Well, it is a quadratic already. But that's what's that's how we're going to solve this thing. We're actually, it's going to look a bit messier at first, okay? So now we're going to expand it. And we're actually going to do two things in this step. Expand. And then we're going to have um, the log on the left, but not on the right. But what we can do is we can take that number one and we can express that as a common log as well. So we can take, it's just a number, but we can take any positive number and express it as a log. So we're also going to express one as a common log. Okay, so two things are happening here. On the left-hand side, we're going to expand so we take the two binomials, the product of the two binomials. I can see it's going to be x squared plus x minus 2. And over here, how do I write 1 as a log? Uh, if it's two base times, like a log, negative 1, because it's just 10 divided by 10. Uh, so this is the exponent. So if we start with the base of 10, which is the common log, then we're saying 10 to the power of what? Uh, no, 10 to the power of 1 is what? That's what we're asking. 10 to the power of 1 okay. is 10. Okay, so this log of 10 is equivalent to 1. Okay, well, now, if we have uh, the log of this expression with a base 10 is the same as the log of this expression, base 10, then the numbers here, the quadratic equation, uh, sorry, the quadratic here is equal to 10, okay? Uh, before, when we did this with exponents, we said equate the exponents. I'm not sure what, how you would describe this one when you're working with logs, but basically we know that x squared plus x minus two is equal to 10. And from here, we express in standard form and next solve for x and this part should be mostly familiar we're going to express in standard form means set it equal to zero which means i need to subtract 10 from both sides i have x squared plus x minus 12 equals zero and from here i'm solving which means i need to factor so i need two values that multiply to negative 12 and add to add to 1. It's going to be x plus 4 times x minus 3, which tells me that x equals negative 4 or x equals 3.
Now we need to make a check because not necessarily, both of these answers aren't necessarily acceptable. Our logs have to be defined from the original expression. Now check that both solutions uh, that's not a good way to say it. Let's say now check for extraneous roots. All logarithmic expressions must be defined. It's also not a great way to say it, but I think you get what I'm saying. Well, both of our log expressions are undefined for x equals negative 4 because you can't have the log of a negative number. So negative 4 minus 1 is negative and negative 4 plus 2 is negative. So both the log of x minus 1 and the log of x plus 2 are undefined for x equals negative 4. Therefore, the only solution is x equals 3. Running through the steps again really quickly. We have our log expression, our, our equation. We bring the logs to the same side, we isolate them. Then we see if there's a product law or quotient law that we can apply in order to uh, make it a single log. In this case, we ended up with the quadratic inside that log. We expressed one as the log of 10, which allowed us to equate our log uh, and then factor to solve. At the end, we double checked that each that the solutions were uh, helpful or not helpful. Negative four doesn't work because our expressions would be undefined. Therefore, x equals three is the only solution. Okay, example two b. Example two b is a bit of a messy expression. It is log, and then we're looking at the cube root of something. The cube root of something, you just draw the radical symbol, the square root symbol, but then you put a 3 there uh, sitting on top there. And underneath this cube root symbol we have x squared plus 48x. That is going to be equal to 2 over 3, 2 thirds. Now if I look at this thing, a couple things jump out at me. I'm thinking here's a quadratic expression, so at some point I may be factoring, but instantly I don't like working with a cube root. Well, I, I shouldn't say I don't like it, I, I can't do it, okay? So what could I do to make this left side a little easier to deal with? I'm gonna write the left side, this radical, instead of writing it as a radical, what can I write it as? I can write it as a power. Write the radical as a power. So I'll have this expression x squared plus 48x to the power of one third. And then what can I do? Then we can apply the power law of logs. Okay, so two steps are going to happen here on the left. I'll do them both. We're going to have the log of, and then open bracket, x squared plus 48x, close bracket, to the power of one third. That's the same as a cube root. And now if I apply the power law of logs, I can bring that exponent to be a multiplier out front. So I now have one third, the log of x squared plus 48x. And on the right hand side, it's still equaling two-thirds. Well that's convenient. I have thirds on the left and thirds on the right. 
So what can I do? Multiply both sides by 3. That leaves me with the log of open bracket x squared plus 48x equals 2. Now what do you think our strategy is going to be? Uh, right there is a log. Yay! Express 2 as a common log, which just means a log with a base of 10. Try to do that. What is the log? Log of 100. Log of 100. Now I can equate my two logs. So I've got x squared. That means I can just drop the log. Basically uh, unlog each side. And from here we solve. You could say express in standard form and solve, but you know that already. So we'll subtract 100 from each side. And equals 0. Factor both sides. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 100 and add to 48. Uh, that's going to be 50 and 2. It's going to be positive 50, x plus 50, x minus 2. So x equals negative 50 or x equals positive 2. And now I need to check check these values for extraneous roots. So in order for these to be true, our original log on the left has to be true. Both brick has solutions. How do you know? Actually, no, never mind. I was thinking not. Check for extraneous roots. So this thing, the cube root of x yes. squared plus 48x. Both work though. Or no, negative two. Basically, this needs to be positive, right? Uh, you could check that it equals 2 thirds. We need to make sure that it does actually equal two thirds. Um, so let's work it down. If we sub one in and see what happens, you can start working on the on the right hand column here. This is a good place to make that transition if you need to do that for space. Uh, I am going to just keep working here as long as I can. So x, if I sub in negative fifty to both, well, I end up with x squared is negative 50 times negative 50, which is 2,500, positive. And here I'm going to have 2 less, because uh, it's 48 times 50. And this is going to be negative. So I'm actually going to end up with positive 100 under here. And then I need to take the cube root of 100. Uh, and your calculator can do that. Or you can use, you can convert this into a log and get it that way, but I would just use my calculator at this point as long as you know how to do it by expressing as a log, but it does equal two-thirds the cube root of 100 oh, my calculator gave me math, so... is two-thirds. Okay, we're going to check for extraneous roots. When you put negative 50 in here, you end up with the log of the cube root of 100. And then you can use all of your nifty skills for converting this into something easier to deal with. So you can go the log of 100 to the power of 1 third, which means you can get 1 third times the log of 100. And since we're in base 10 here, common log, you know that this is 10 to the power of 2. So the log of 100 is 2. And 2 times 1 third is 2 thirds. So that one works. Then we can go off and sub in x equals plus 2, in which case we would get um, the same thing. 
cube root of 100 because we would get 98, sorry, 48 times 2, which is 96, plus 2 squared, which is 4, which is 100. So they both satisfy the original logarithmic expression. So they are both uh, good solutions, both valid solutions, no extraneous roots here.